How's it going everyone? Welcome to the updated 2025 best NVIDIA optimization guide. We're going to go over some hardware based optimizations that could ultimately fix low performance on a good NVIDIA graphics card. The best drivers to install, the best way to install these drivers, and the best control panel settings, along with some few extra registry tweaks. This guide works on any PC with a NVIDIA graphics card and is guaranteed to deliver you better performance after watching the full guide. All right, everyone. So once you have the NVIDIA optimization pack downloaded from the Discord, all you want to do is find it in your downloads right click on it click extract here and then go to the first folder open up gpu z and what we're going to do is we're going to check the bus interface so what you're going to do click the question mark right next to the bus interface click start render test make sure to do this before checking now once you've done that hover over this and you want to make sure that it is currently running at is at the same thing as your supported bus interface so as you guys can see the graphics card reports that it supports PCI Express X16 4.0. It is currently running at PCI Express X16 4.0, which is correct. And that's how it should be. Now it might be X8 4.0 that the graphics card supports. If it's running at X8 4.0, that means you're good. However, if you are on a graphics card that supports X16 4.0, and for some reason it's at X4.0, X4 3.0 or X4 4.0, that means either you have the graphics card in the wrong PCI slot on your motherboard or your BIOS settings for the graphics card are messed up. So what I would recommend is look inside of your PC, make sure that the graphics card is not in the second slot of the motherboard, make sure it's on the top slot. Now, if the top slot for some reason doesn't work, that means your motherboard is faulty or you're just not plugging it in and right. So make sure that you plug your graphics card in the first slot in your motherboard. That's pretty much going to boost your FPS by twice as much than what you had before. So that's a really big thing. Now, let's just say that it's just bugged out for some reason, even though that you have it in the first PCI slot. What you're going to do is the following. You're going to close out of this, restart your computer. And once it's restarted, once it's while it's restarting, just spam the delete key on your keyboard in order to go to the BIOS settings. All right, so once it's in the BIOS, all you want to do is if you're on ASUS, you're going to go to Advanced tab, scroll down to the bottom, and go to Onboard Devices Configuration. And then you want to make sure this first hop setting is, make, is on auto. If it's not on auto, it might set the graphics card in X8 4.0 or even lower. So make sure it's on auto, and then scroll down to the bottom, and make sure that M.2 configuration is also on auto, and CPU PCIe configuration mode is also on auto. If it's not, it could have some issues and it could give you lower bus interface if it's bugged out. So make sure that's on auto if you're on ASUS, but realistically ASUS kind of always gets it right. So ASUS motherboards are not really an issue. Then if you're on ASUS, go back by pressing escape, head over to the top and go to PCH configuration and then go to PCI Express configuration. Then just all these link speeds, set them to the maximum value. For me, it's Gen 4. For you, it might be Gen 5 or Gen 3 or whatever the highest is. Just make sure it's set to that. And then just go to exit and save changes and reset. Now, if you're on MSI, it's going to be in settings and then advanced and then PCI settings or something like that. Just go in there and make sure that bus interface is on X16 plus X0. Or if it's on something lower than that, just make sure you set it back to auto in order for it to actually use the maximum bus interface. If you're on Gigabyte or any of these other motherboards, you're going to have to just look around the BIOS and find the bus interface setting and make sure it's maxed out or make sure it's set to auto if it's set to some weird value. Other than that, that should fix your GPU bus interface issue if you have that issue to begin with. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to use Display Driver Uninstaller in order to uninstall our current GPU drivers properly. So go to the second folder, double click DDU and double click display driver uninstaller.exe. Press OK, select device type GPU, make sure it's on NVIDIA, and then I'd recommend just pressing clean and restart. So we're gonna do that right now. All right, so once the PC is back on, you're gonna notice that it's gonna be in 60 Hertz and it's gonna look very, very laggy. That's completely fine. There's no NVIDIA drivers currently. So open up the file explorer again, go to downloads, and then go to number three, which is gonna be installed deep loaded GPU drivers. Double click NV and clean install. And then for the best driver, guys, I recommend using the latest every single time. However, if latest for some reason gives you issues, then try a version that is slightly lower. But nearly every single time, latest has absolutely zero issues. NVIDIA is really good at their graphics card. They're not like AMD Radeon graphics card where 
they can have potential issues with their drivers. NVIDIA does pr a pretty good job at releasing drivers that have the least amount of issues. So I've been using this driver on all my clients and there's absolutely zero issues. So if there's somebody that's telling you that there's issues with this driver, either they're blaming something else for this problem that they have, or they're just stupid. So make sure that you're just using the latest drivers because anything older doesn't really affect anything. And then select components to install, just make sure display driver is checked, and then just wait for this to download. So once the download is done, all you're gonna do is follow the following options for the installation tweaks. So I check the first three options and I check disable and sell, and I show expert tweaks, and I disable driver telemetry, I disable HD audio device sleep timer, check enable message signal interrupts, and just make sure this is both on default, disable HDCP, and then make sure these last two are checked. If they are not checked, you're not gonna be able to play games with easy anti-cheat. So make sure to check those two. Press next, wait for that to apply. And then press install, and then it's gonna go directly through with the NVIDIA graphics card installer. So I'll just wait for this thing to do the job. So you might get this error uh, you can see right here, just completely ignore it and then press okay. And as you guys can see, the graphics card is going to be completely done and you can just open up display settings, go to advanced display and set your refresh rate back to the maximum value, just like I did right now. Click keep changes, go back, and then we're going to go to the fourth folder, which is going to be the NVIDIA control panel settings. All you got to do, right click on desktop, click NVIDIA control panel, go to adjust image settings with preview. Use my preference emphasizing, drag this all the way to the left, press apply. Go to manage 3D settings and then gamma correction, turn that off. Scroll down. Low latency mode is completely obsolete if you play games that have NVIDIA reflex low latency in the game. So if you set this to off, on, or ultra in this NVIDIA control panel, if you play a game with reflex, it won't do nothing. So you just literally set it to off if you only play games that use NVIDIA reflex low latency. However, if you play games that don't have NVIDIA reflex, you can just set this to on. I wouldn't really recommend Ultra as it could have some stutters and some FPS drops in games that don't have reflex, of course. OpenGL rendering GPU, just set it to your GPU. And then power management mode, prefer maximum performance. And then preferred refresh rate, highest available. Shader cache size, leave it on default. Texture filtering quality, high performance. And then scroll down. And then threaded optimization, leave that on auto then press apply on the bottom right. And then click configure surround, just set this to your graphics card, and then go to change resolution, use NVIDIA color settings, and I put dynamic range set to full, press apply, and then go to adjust desktop size and position. If you don't use any stretch resolution, you just play native, set this to no scaling, and then press apply and press yes. And then we're gonna go to adjust desktop color settings. If you like making your colors look a little bit more vibrant, I recommend setting digital vibrance to 75%, which is what I do personally. Then press apply, press yes. Then click desktop at the top, enable developer settings, manage GPU performance counters, check allow access to the GPU performance counters to all users, and then press apply. It's gonna restart the graphics card driver, and then all you have to do is just press yes. Then close out of that, go back to the folder, and we're gonna to go to the sixth to the fifth one, which is gonna be NVIDIA profile inspector settings, open this up. And what we're gonna do is the following. Expand this just a little bit. You're gonna scroll down and you're gonna find CUDA Force P2 state, set this to off, and then press apply on the top right. And then you're gonna scroll down a bit more. And then R bar feature, set this to enabled. And then R bar option, set it to 00x1. And then R bar size limit, just set to the one that has 4 million or whatever this is. And then press apply changes on the top right. Then you're gonna scroll down, and that's gonna be it for NVIDIA Profile Inspector settings. Then press apply, close out of that, and then go back to the NVIDIA folder optimization pack, and then we're gonna to go to number six, which is gonna be the extra resident tweaks for NVIDIA. Now, we've already done one of these using NV Clean Install. We can do one more using the registry, which is gonna disable a P state option in the graphics card. So it just constantly runs at the maximum P state on your graphics card. So if you open up MSI Afterburner, as you guys can see, it's running at 1695 and then 906 millivolts. So that's pretty much like a power saving mode for this graphics card, the 3090. If I use this registry tweak, it's gonna max out 
the voltage that's on the 3090 and the speed so it's constantly running at the maximum speed and voltage now if you're on a laptop or if you have a really old graphics card that runs really hot already before even doing this tweak then i do not recommend doing this at all however if you have a 30 series graphics card or newer and it doesn't run that hot or you can you can increase the fan speeds in MSI Afterburner just like so, then I recommend doing this tweak because it does help latency a ton and it does make everything feel way better and gives you more FPS. So if you do want to continue with this tweak, all you want to do is close out of this, open up registry editor, and then you go to H key local machine, you're gonna go to system, current control set, control, class, and you're gonna find 4D, 36E968, expand that, and then find the key with your graphics card in it. So there might be two of these. You just want to go through both of them and then just find hardware information right here and make sure it says NVIDIA something something, whichever your graphics card is. Then you're going to right click on the blank space, click new, D Word 32 bit value, and then you're going to type the following disable dynamic P state. Then press enter on that. And then double click on it set it to one and press ok and i'm going to restart the computer as you guys can see this is currently what the graphics card is running at sort of like a power saving mode but not really i'm going to restart it and you guys are going to see the difference so we're back on as you guys can see if we open up msi afterburner it's completely running at the highest p state on the actual graphics card this does not mean that it's an overclock this is not an overclock this is just what the factory state of the graphics card is whenever you boost in the game so let's just say you launch a game without doing this it's going to run sort of like this it might fluctuate up and down so doing this it's just going to make it so it doesn't fluctuate as much and it's going to give you a lower latency and obviously it's just going to boost higher in the game it's going to give you more fps but it's not an overclock and again if you really have bad cooling it's not recommended to do this or if you do want to just max out the fan speeds and do this tweak that's completely fine just download MSI Afterburner to do that and just let's set the slider to 100% and press the apply button right here. But do not run MSI Afterburner in the background. That's not recommended. It does add a little bit of input delay if you run it in the background. And you can just close out of that. But anyways, guys, that's going to be pretty much it for this video. You should be getting way more FPS in Fortnite, Valorant, and whatever else game that you play that you watch this video for. And if you did, comment down below and show everyone that you did get an FPS boost. Other than that, make sure to subscribe, make sure to like, and I'll see you guys in the next one. But before you leave, if you want lower input delay, way more FPS, and you want this all done for you, then go to the first link in the description and book a PC optimization service with the best PC optimizer on the internet, and I'll see you soon. Other than that, peace.